for the kind invitation. It's really a big pleasure for me to be here and uh, giving a talk about our experiences with targeted treatment of non small cell lung cancer in Hungary. Maybe you know very well uh, where is Hungary. Hungary is in Central Europe. We are quite small. We have got uh, 10 million inhabitants. But unfortunately, from this 10 million inhabitants, we have got uh, 10,000 new lung cancer cases in a yearly basis, so it's uh, high. What about the mortality rate of lung cancer in Europe among males? Um, you can see here Hungary. Hungary is in the leading uh, position, unfortunately, at uh, not only in Europe, but in all over the world. What about uh, among females? What about the mortality rate of lung cancer in Europe among females? Unfortunately, the situation is the same. And uh, uh, what about the mortality rate difference between uh, from 1955 until now? You can see here that among males, we reach the plateau, but in females, uh, the mortality rate continu continuously rising. When we are thinking about the incidence of uh, lung cancer among males and females, then, for example, uh, 20 years ago, the, uh, the ratio was 1 to 4. But, for example, nowadays in Budapest, in our capital, this uh, ratio is 1 to 1 to uh, Two, and it will be equalized. So it, I think it's really a big problem for the women as well, the lung cancer. So what about the pathological subtypes? At the beginning of this century, the most frequent subtype of lung cancer was a squamous cell lung cancer and then adenocarcinoma. What is the situation in the year 2015? So uh, the ratio of incidence of adenocarcinoma is 45%, and the ratio of incidence of squamous cell lung cancer is only 25%. The incidence of adenocarcinoma is continuously rising in Hungary. When we are talking about the decision flow for choosing the first line treatment in adenocarcinoma based on the molecular thrust, then in Hungary we have got a unique situation because of we test first the KRASH. Why? Because we know that uh, in lung adenocarcinoma, these mutations, the driver mutations, are almost mutually exclusive. So it's a reasonable decision. Then first we exclude the KRASH mutant lung cancer, and then we don't test the other mutations. And in case of Y-type KRASH, we will continue with AGFR test, and in case of double Y-type lung cancer, so KRASH Y-type and EGFR Y-type lung cancer, we continue uh, to the ALK. We routinely don't test the ROS1 or CMET. So, uh, uh, as I told you before, that in uh, drug, druggable mutations, uh, uh, they are um, almost mutually exclusive, but we had some double mutations, so we have data uh, from the incidence of uh, double mutations, so uh, KRASH uh, mutant and EGFR mutant lung cancer, the incidence is uh, about 1%. So, and what about the ratio of incidence of ALK positivity in Hungary? So we have got data from double Y-type adenocarcinoma, so incidence of this uh, uh, y type, uh, y type adenocarcinoma of uh, uh, ALK is very low, 3 to 4 percent in our experiences. So uh, it is always a question that what we can do, we test reflex or request the biomarker status of the patient. It means that uh, the reflex testing means that the oncologist uh, will as the pathologist for biomarker tests. So we choose the request testing, and we test only adenocarcinoma. We don't test the known uh, otherwise specified non-small cell lung cancer. We don't test the squamous cell lung cancer at, at all in case of uh, never smokers, uh, squamous cell lung cancer as well. 
So, um, because of uh, my talk is the Hungarian experiences with, uh, with the targeted treatment, I would like to show you uh, the result of CTAC study. This CTAC study was organized uh, in Hungary. I was the founder and PI of this study. Uh, because we uh, measured the efficacy of first-line allotinib treatment of advanced EGFR mutant lung cancer. Uh, 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 and uh, what was the reason of this trial? And that time we had got only one trial, positive trial with Caucasian patients. You know very well it was the Rosel trial, it was a Yurtak study, and it was uh, an international study. We had got centers in Hungary, in Turkey, and in Latvia. And then uh, we uh, measured only the so-called classical mutations, so agent, uh, uh, exon 19 deletion and exon 21 point mutation. And the primary A point of this trial was uh, the progression-free survival. We screened more than uh, 650 uh, patients and uh, 62 patients for enrolled. And uh, the inter to uh, uh, treat population mean all enrolled patients data, it was uh, 60 to the number of this patient, as I told you before. And uh, the primary, you can see here the results of progression-free survival. The progression-free survival was almost, almost 13 months, but I would like to emphasize in so-called classical mutations. What about the uh, progression with survival well, analyzed by subgroups in exon 19 deletion and exon 21 mutation? Interestingly, the uh, progression with survival well was higher in exon 21 point mutation than in exon 19 deletion, but it was not uh, statistically significant. It is interesting because we know very well the data from Laxlang C and Laxlang 6 that uh, the situation was uh, reversed. So, what about uh, the one-year survival? The one-year survival was more uh, than 80% of uh, this patient, and we compare uh, to the other first-line phase three studies uh, or, or results, then you can see here that the CTAC result was comparable. So, uh, I would like to share uh, our experiences with afatinib treatment. Maybe you uh, was taken part of extended access program with afatinib. It was a 3B clinical study. And I would like to show you uh, some experiences and some results from this study with our experiences. It, uh, all uh, EGFR mutant patients uh, would be able to, uh, to involve not only the rare uh, or the classical mutant patient, the patient must be EGFR TKI naive, and the patient could have the afetinib in all lines, even doing third, fourth, or fifth lines. So you can see here the patient characteristics, more female than male. The vast majority of the uh, patients got in first line setting. The majority of the patient uh, were non-smoker, never smoker. And uh, we found uh, one double mutation from this uh, patient. So this patient had got exon 19 and Kerash uh, uh, mutation, but uh, the outcome uh, for this patient was not good. And uh, you can see here we have got only uh, had, uh, uh, overall survey, uh, only uh, res results uh, from response rate, uh, the majority of patients respond to the treatment, and no, no new safety signal uh, appeared in this uh, study. So uh, I would like to show you a, a, a case report from this study. Uh, a 59 years old female patient. Uh, she uh, was a uh, never smoker, and in September of 2012, she underwent a left lower lobectomy. She had got a so called N2 disease. So, we gave the patient an uh, adjuvant radio chemotherapy. Unfortunately, two years later, a pleural effusion and a left suprarenal metastasis appeared uh, of this patient. The cytology from pleural effusion showed the malignant tumor cells and uh, we uh, detected an exon 19 deletion, adenocarcinoma, and so we started the GOT treatment in December 2013. 
And in two months, uh, the, uh, the control PET CT showed a complete metabolic pathological response. And uh, uh, okay, I told you before that we started the Afatinib treatment in December of 2013, and uh, the patient, you can see here the co complete metabolic response, and the current status is the similar. Uh, uh, the patient is compl in complete pathological response for more than two and a half years. So uh, what could be the conclusion of, uh, from uh, this uh, patient's story? Uh, that uh, the patient uh, had got an exon 19 uh, uh, deletion. Uh, she is in complete remission until now for more than two and a half years. She is living in an active uh, life, and it seems that in HFR uh, positivity with, uh, uh, with exon 19 deletion, it could be the best choice, uh, the guillotine treatment. Why? Maybe you know very well the data from lax 3 and lax 6 trial. In this trial, um, in case of um, uh, EGFR mutant patient, the efficacy of efatinib in first-line setting was compared to the platinum-based therapy. And what about the overall survival? It was really very unique because of the patient who got uh, the first-line efatinib treatment lived more than one year longer than uh, the patient who were treated as first-line platinum-based chemotherapy. So in the last part of my talk, I would like to show you a Hungarian retrospective study. As I told you before, we have got quite a lot of experiences with Keras and with Keras subtypes lung cancer as well. So uh, we investigated the distinct epidemiological and clinical consequence of, of uh, uh, classical uh, versus rare HGFR mutation of adenocarcinoma because of the, in advanced adenocarcinoma, the clinical significance of rare HGFR mutation has not uh, yet been clearly established, and we could measure the a predictive value of Keras uh, mutant lung cancer treated with conventional platinum-based chemotherapy. So it was interesting, uh, okay, the, uh, the ratio of Keras mutant uh, adenocarcinoma was 27%, but interestingly, the ratio of incidence of HFR classic mutant uh, adenocarcinoma and the ratio of incidence of HFR rare mutant uh, adenocarcinoma was quite similar, and we uh, found uh, uh, so-called synonym uh, HFR mutant patient in 3%. So it was really uh, interesting that the ratio was quite equal in classical and in rare mutant adenocarcinoma. And uh, what about uh, the overall sur survival with different subgroups of the patient? So you can see here that uh, it's interesting in the clinical practice that, that the patient who had never smokers lung adenocarcinoma, they lived longer than the patient who had got, uh, uh, who, who were former smoker or current smoker at time of the diagnosis. At what about the different subgroups of the patient with AGFR mutant classic, with AGFR mutant rare, with double Y-type, Keras and EGFR Y-pet adenocarcinoma, and with Keras mutant adenocarcinoma. The EGFR uh, classic and rare mutant patients were treated with EGFR TKI, and the double Y-type adenocarcinoma and the Keras mutant uh, uh, adenocarcinoma uh, were treated by the conventional platinum burst chemotherapy. You can see here that the overall survival was best for the classical mutant patient and then the uh, rare mutant patient. And it, is, it seems that in stage four disease, the overall survival uh, for uh, double white type and the Keras mutant adenocarcinoma was similar. So uh, what about the treatment outcome, uh, the TKI treatment outcome in classical mutation group and in rare mutation group. You can see here that the overall response rate for a classical mutant patient was higher than in rare mutant patient, and the progression-free survival was higher in classical mutant patient 
comparing to rare mutant patients, they were all treated with TKI. So, what uh, was the conclusion of this trial? So, it seems that classical and rare mutations show distinct epidemiological properties, and it seems uh, that uh, in the case of a rare mutation, we can start with uh, first line EGFR TKI, and we have to closely follow up the patient because of uh, the treatment efficacy. Uh, it, could be similar than the platinum-based chemotherapy with a better tolerability or could uh, better, better. And it seems that rare EGFR mutation have a significant clinical impact and broaden the patient population which could potentially benefit for EGFR TKI therapy. And uh, we have got data uh, from Laxan 3 and Laxan 6 trial about uh, the treatment of um, uh, from rare mutations. You can see here that the uh, progression-free survival for these uh, patients was between 6.7 and 19 to 2 months. Uh, how can I uh, summarize uh, our experiences and possibilities in, in Hungary? Instead of reflex biomarker uh, testing, we use the request testing. We test only the adenocarcinoma patient. We don't test the NOS. We don't test the squamous cell lung cancer. We uh, start with KRASH. In KRASH uh, uh, Y-type patient, we follow to EGFR and the ALK results in case of double mutation. And maybe because, you know, in European Union, uh, the chrysotinib uh, was approved in first line setting as well. Maybe later on, we will, in case of uh, uh, Y-type Kerash, uh, we will test parallelly the EGFR and ELK. Uh, it, uh, in the ASCO meeting, uh, it was heavily discussed uh, uh, the liquid biopsy. The liquid biopsy has just started in, in Hungary. We have got some results uh, from blood. Uh, Jefinitib and allotinib is reimbursed, but afatinib only special request from the insurance company. Uh, Crisotinib is reimbursed, but only with special request, but the patient with second and more line setting or can get chrysotinib uh, with reimbursement. The surgeonation EGFR TK ozimertinib tagriso in case of uh, T790 mutation with uh, special left test, but we have got a uh, few experiences with this. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Uh, this is a view uh, from Budapest by night. You can see here the chain bridge and the parliament and then you please come visit Hungary. You are warmly invited. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Osteros. Please, any questions? Thank you, Dr. Osteros. Please, any questions, if uh, there are any? Uh... Uh, it's very strange to see that the uh, incidence of lung cancer in Hungary may be two times more than in Austria, which, which is very close to you, or uh, Czech uh, Republic. So what, 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 what is the reason? It is a very, very, very simple answer. We don't know. <laughs> it, was, yeah, okay. it, is, it is always asked us, but we don't know. Because, of, for example, the smoking habits is not different from, the, uh, of, uh, from this time. It is not different, for example, from Greece or from Germany. And we have got so very high incidence of lung cancer. Maybe some genetic background or some social behavior. or I, I, We don't know, really. It would be, we will be investigated this problem. And what, what about smoking habit? Is it uh, smoking popular still in your country, as for example in Poland? Uh, what, what, what's the situation now? What is the percent of the population which smoke? In Hungary, unfortunately, uh, uh, the, uh, the females smoke a little bit uh, oh. higher rate than in, in, in uh, comparing to the European uh, countries the females, and the males not. So I think uh, the smoking rate is in Hungary 36% at all, and in, 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 in women is uh, uh, around 25. So it's, it's, uh, in women we have got a, a, big, a bigger problem. But uh, we have got some uh, political effort against smoking, and uh, in Hungary uh, we have got a total ban for smoking in, in public places, 
and not only for the cigarettes, but for the e-cigarettes as well. So it's very strange uh, in, in all over the, uh, over the world. So we have got a total ban for e-cigarettes as well in public places. Okay. So we make uh, efforts, but we don't know why is the situation so, so bad in our country uh, concerning the incidence of lung cancer. And in, in, in any case, we have different situation here in Russia and in St. Petersburg. We, we had a very high uh, 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 frequency of squamous cell cancer. Uh, about 55% of all non-small cell cancer are squamous, uh, have squamous origin. And in your data, you show that only 35% of the patients have, have squamous cell. So this is like in uh, North America and Western Europe. It is uh, maybe because of uh, the ch changes, maybe, the smoking habit. So uh, I know very well the Hungarian data. In small cell lung cancer, the incidence is 13%. And, uh, we, have got, mm, and we have got some uh, uh, data about Western countries and from, from, from the states. The uh, lung cancer uh, in never smokers among females is rising. And it seems that in adenocarcinoma, uh, in women, 30% uh, are never smoker. So it's uh, another interesting finding. And, uh, 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 and uh, it, it is maybe because of uh, uh, that, uh, I don't know what is the situation here, but the, uh, that time, uh, 10 or 20 years ago, uh, the, the, the smoking habit changed with filtered cigarettes, yes? In, 60s, 70s without filter, yes? And it seems that when uh, uh, the smoking will be with, without filter uh, smoke, then it, uh, they will get uh, squamous cell lung cancer, and in filtered cigarettes, they, uh, the patient will get adenocarcinoma. Very good, yes, unfortunately. Yeah. You've told a lot about rare mutations in EGFR, and um, what kind of assay, what particular tests uh, do you use usually to, to catch them? Yes, yes. It is, uh, it is another very interesting question because I told you that the, the ratio of incidence of rare mutation was in this retrospective study were high. But when we take into the, uh, account the, uh, the results of your tax study, in the your tax study, uh, the, uh, the rate of uh, 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 double mutation, when EGFR classical mutation and T790 mutation, the incidence was more than 25. So it's, uh, it is, uh, it is uh, depending on the, the test. We, we use the Sanger, Sanger, Sanger test, and maybe it, it would be a, a more sensitive for the rare mutations as well. And uh, it, um, another important point of view, that it seems that the rare mutations are independent from the smoking uh, habit, or it could be uh, smoking dependent, yes, the patient, because we know the carcinogenesis process in classical EGFR mutations is independent from smoking, yeah? Dear Dr. Rostoros, thank you for your interesting data. I have a question about combination of inhibitors, tyrosine kinase, and other uh, treatment. For example, uh, cetuximab with afatinib, which is now improved in the United States. Do you have any uh, perspectives for these combinations on any, or any others in Europe or in your country? What is your the, opinion? Uh, you mean EGFR, TK, and a monoclonal antibody treatment uh, to combine the EGFR and cetuximab? Cetuximab and afatinib, the combination it, which is approved by NCCN guidelines in this year. Uh, do this you combination? Have any, yeah. Uh, the after the, prof and AGF after the progression, uh, after the progression. Yes, after the uh, progression. Oh, yeah. Okay, we have got some uh, data, but not finalized data about it. I think it's more important the immunotherapy because we focus on the immunotherapy and, uh, and it, it will be the sequence of the immunotherapy and the EGFR TK and targeted treatment and the combination uh, setting. I don't think so that the future is to combine the AGFR TK and AGFR monoclonal antibody. Thank you. Hmm? And what, what about the, the, uh, the availability of the, of the TKI in your country? Is it free for the patients with a mutation? 
uh, how, how the patient receive? They pay by themselves, they pay pa partly, or they uh, receive free from the government? Okay, thank you very much for your question. Uh, uh, Jefitinib and Allotinib is uh, totally invalid without any program in case of EGFR activating mutation. Afetinib is only with special request. Okay, but uh, at the moment uh, um, in EGFR TKI naive patient, they can get uh, the allotinib and jefitinib, and we are making big effort that uh, afetinib would be totally reimbursed in, in, in Hungary. You have uh, equal availability both to gefitinib and erlotinib. How you choose between the two? What? You have equal availability to of gefitinib and erlotinib. How you choose between the two? Yes. And you? <laughs> oh, okay. It's, uh, we, 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 I, have I think, we have a I think, different uh, situation. I, I, I think the efficacy of these two drugs, I think it's equal. Yeah, I think so. Uh, maybe the toxicity, uh, toxicity profile a, a little bit different, yes, because uh, in definitive the, the hepatic failure rate is a little bit higher, and the DR rate and, and the skin rush higher in, in, in erlotinib, so it is up to you. But you will choose in first line setting. We have, uh, slightly, we have slightly different situation because I believe uh, gefitinib is more accessible than erlotinib due to some. Uh, regulation. So the idea is that uh, here there is less room for the choice. It is uh, not. It, uh, we, have, uh, we can access uh, uh, erlotinib and uh, jefinitib. Uh, same. Uh, we have got the same possibilities, yes? And the doctor will decide what we will use. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Ну что, на, на самом деле, мне кажется, очень интересные, э, прежде всего, эпидемиологические данные. То, что препараты эффективны, мы все хорошо знаем. The, the, the frequency uh, frequency of, of incidents is, is quite different to, to, to fault. I can't ex there are no rational explanation. Since this uh, statistics in both countries is, is well designed. The frequency of mutations in the data presented by Dr. Ostrich, this is something lower than in our, in our Russian population. Maybe Imanita will, will comment on this issue. When we tell about the incidence of mutation, we'll tell about adenocarcinomas. However, in Russia, those smokers who smoked, smoked strong cigarettes, they, they, they get now lung cancer. Hence, we can the squamous cell cancers are uh, maybe ascribed to the to, to heavy smokers in past there may be 19s on the light cigarette late light cigarettes which cause adenocarcinoma they appeared in russia only in 19s only if in western countries even among adenocarcinomas the cigarette-related uh, disease cases predominate. In Russia, half of adenocarcinomas is present, represented by non-smokers. Hence, in, in, in our country, the squamous cell is first most common amongst heavy smokers. If, uh, if, if we take together all the cases of uh, lung cancer, in Russia, so we, we, our, 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 our scores are something lower than in West, six against ten percent. And in case of the, since there are, uh, we, uh, but in our country there is a high, uh, high incidence of GFR mutation, mutations. I have not heard. <laughs> I haven't heard about this such dependence uh, between the, uh, the brand of cigarette or or percent. If we take if we take the uh, the 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 smokers who who uh, and strong cigarettes, strong tobacco, these these is high tar cigarettes and high tar high nicotine cigarettes. 
uh, that was usual for Russia. It is inhalated not to, it is inhalated not so uh, deeply as the light cigarettes. The light cigarettes have uh, are low tar. Uh, in this case, uh, they, they contain nitrosamines, and nitrosamines called uh, cosme and and uh, upon transition from from strong cigarettes to light cigarettes, the, 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 there is increase in uh, denocarcinoma cases, frequencies since nitrosamines are now the main carcinogen. And uh, immunitif is right, as usually. And what we see in our country, there is a lot of central cancers in Russia. There's much, uh, much higher incidence than, than in other in Western countries. If we compare, compare, for example, with Asian countries in Asia.